Okay guys, um, this lecture set we're going to go over now about pharmaceutical calculations is from a long, long time ago. I think I did a lecture at uh, School of Pharmacy UCL, um, must have been six, seven years now ago, and it was kind of based around these slides, and it was initially kind of introducing um, the basics behind pharmaceutical calculations and then just kind of working up. If you've seen our um, pharmaceutical calculation hierarchy, I tend to kind of start at the bottom, you know, conversion of units and etc., and then go up heading towards things like allegation and things. So yeah, welcome to pharmaceutical calculation techniques, the basics. Um, so just to start out, a few things to know. A tutor, teacher, a friend, your mum does not know the best technique for you to use. You do. You have performed pharmaceutical calculations at university before during your degree. Use what you know. I mean, that's really saying we get a lot of people at Pharmacy CPA who are, you know, what uh, what is the main rule that you need to know to perform complex pharmaceutical calculations? And there really is no answer. This I've probably tutored over a thousand um, students face to face, and each one seems to have these different rules which they go by. Really, go by with what you know. You know, if you don't know anything, then these slides are kind of here to kind of introduce you to the different subjects. Um, but if you know what works, use that. So yeah, we're just going to suggest um, which may be easier or more accurate um, techniques, which you know may improve your speed or you know how quick you can do it. I think a good point with that as well is the more kind of techniques that you learn, you can use um, when you do the actual question itself you can use the different techniques to kind of reconfirm your answer in a quicker, different way. So you can kind of match up, well, I've got the answer in using this technique and I've got the answer using this technique, so it must be correct. So calculations aren't hard. All it really is is, is arithmetic, um, quite specialized. Um, the exam actually kind of categorizes the different questions into kind of subgroups so you, the most important thing is really to do as many questions as you can and remain supremely accurate and logical. If you're ditzy make sure you check your workings thoroughly. I'm quite ditzy. I never ever, I kind of assumed that I was just right, you know, that I was brilliant at it but even now um, and you know I've been doing this for a, a decade almost, I still go back and check it thoroughly before I submit the answer. So you don't need to know everything. The GPHC puts questions in which are ambiguously written, which you can't answer in the time frame. You've got something like two minutes or whatever it is to um, get the answer. If you see something which is mind-bogglingly complex, keep, you know you, you always remember that you only have to get 14 questions out of 20 correct. I mean it's great to get all of them correct but there may be some which will take up too much time and may not be as accurate as you'd like so skip it move to the next one. So if you've watched the initial video about pharmaceutical calculations you'll remember that at the bottom of the pyramid are the units so you have to be comfortable with the base of the pyramid before you can move up to the next stage. So units really is the foundation. If you don't know how to very, very quickly convert between, say, nanograms, micrograms, milligrams, grams and kilograms very quickly, um, you're going to be in trouble. The main ones that you need to know are micrograms, milligrams and grams, and then on the outskirts, because you don't really get kilograms of drugs, you very rarely get um, nanograms of drugs as well, and you just got to remember that there's a thousand difference between each, you know, nano, micro, milli, um, and grams is you know the basis. Um, yeah, this highlight here. If you cannot do this, stop what you're doing and try and figure it out. So at the bottom, there's some really easy, um, quick examples. What is 1.8 grams to milligrams? Well, there's a lot of milligrams in grams, so, you know, 1,800 times by 1,000 nanograms, you're going backwards, um, and then 1.3 kilograms is 1,300 grams, 0.2 milligrams is 0.0002 grams. You probably won't ever see three 
uh, noughts, they usually kind of keep it between uh, these kind of numbers, you know, four figures, four, maybe five figures, but never really this length. So unit conversions, um, you've got to be familiar with uh, imperial units and metric units. One, uh, Do you need to know these by heart? Well, me as a pharmacist practicing, I do know some kind of general rules off by heart. The, the key ones I remember are 30 centimeters equals 12 inches. It's the size of a ruler. Um, one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. You can reference this in the BNF, however, it's just good to know even when you're, you know, cooking at home or, or whatever, it's it's good to have that reference that you can quickly pick up. Um, these are quite simple examples. You can pause it now, but um, ooh, you can pause it now. Go through that if you like. One liter is a thousand mil. One gram is a kilogram. One gram is 1,000 milligrams, one microgram is one milligram, and yeah, just working it out like that is quite straightforward. Remembering multiples of 10 and getting these really, really quick. Um, as I said, you know, you've got to know this off by heart. Multiplying decibel, deci decibels, decimals, um, you multiplying with whole numbers, you don't have calculation in the exam, so you have to be, you know, pretty confident. Um, so here are the answers. Understanding percentages uh, is quite useful. I'm sure that you already know this, but it's good to check. How much is 28% of 200, <coughs> 250 grams? The way I look at it, it, well, it depends how you want to do it, but the way that I look at it is what is 1% of 250 grams? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is what? It's not 25, it's 2.5. So you've got to think, what is 2.5 times 28? And you can do that in your head. You can do uh, an estimation. You know that 28 is near 30. So 2.5, it'd be 7.5 somewhere in that region. So yeah, 70. So there's the 7. So what percentage is 160 grams of... 400 grams, so you're putting 160 over 400. Um, you can see the common denominator there, which is going to be a 4, so it'll be, it will be 40%. Is that right? Well, you know that 200 grams is going to be 50% because it's half of 400, so it looks about right. Oh yeah, and 40 grams is going to be 10%, so you just minus it, you could do it that way, quite straightforward. How much is 62% of 450? So again, it's going to be a, a bit more than half. So 225, so you could say around about 240, 279, there you go. What percentage is 125 milligrams out of 25 grams? You can see there that the units don't match. So you probably convert 25 grams into milligrams, which would be 2,000, uh, 25,000. So there's the answer there. Percentages, weight and weight is grams of drug in 100 grams of the product. Percent weight in volume is the grams of drug in 100 mils of the product. Percentage volume is the millimeter yeah, it's pretty straightforward stuff, guys. How many how many grams of lidocaine are there in one liter of a 7.5 solution? So a 7.5% solution contains 7.5 grams in a hundred lit in a hundred mils. Okay. So if you've got a thousand mils, all you do is add a add a zero. Well, add a uh, sorry a um a decimal place. So it'd be 7.5 grams. A patient who is prescribed 15 grams of lidocaine, how much of a 20% injection should be given? So, 20% injection contains 20 grams in 100 mils, so it would be approximately um, a quarter less. You see what I'm saying? So, it would be around about 75 mils, I believe. There you go. Okay. 
obviously remember some of these questions. It's pretty quick. Um, so C1V1 is your new best friend. I think it's a bit of a lazy friend, but some people like to use it. In plain English, it's the C1 is the original concentration, C2 is the final concentration, V1 is a volume that's about to be diluted, V2, or the spelling mistake there, is a final volume after dilution. Using that's quite useful. You can use some of these examples to kind of go through. Joe has uh, an original two grams per litre solution. That's a bit of an odd unit. He dilutes it and creates three litres of a one gram per litre solution. How much of the original solution did he dilute? So this first step is you take the V1, um, the C1V1 uh, formula, you've got two which is the original concentration and the volume is the unknown, then you know the resulting concentration and the resulting volume, all you do is rearrange the formula and you get 1.5 litres. This one's a little bit trickier, Joe, our new best friend, has 20 litres of a 2 gram per litre solution. He diluted it and created 3 litres of a 1 gram per litre solution. How did he make up such a solution? Lots of solutions there. We're only going to use a small part of the 20 litre. Remember, we have to end up with 3 litres after dilution. So you can pause the video now and kind of work it through. But C1V1 is probably the best way to do this. And you get 1.5 litres again. So Joe has a twenty lit has twenty liters of two grams per liter solution. So he's got what forty grams in solution. It's very very dilute, isn't it? To this solution, he adds thirty liters. So he's going to end up with fifty mils. What is the final concentration of the solution? So you've got the resulting volume, which is 50 litres, which is our unknown C2. No, sorry, our un no, that's our, our volume. And then the C2 is the unknown. Rearrange the equation and you get 0 0.8 grams per litre. So it's really nice to see that we're getting more subscribers on this channel. Um, we would really like to have some more. So if you could share this as much as possible through people on Facebook or just friends that you know would be really really grateful um, we're kind of running out of time at the moment the exam is in a, a month or so and we want to help you guys as much as possible so if you can put comments feedback what you guys want to see we'll generate videos very quickly for you on those topics also check out our book newly written for the 2014 exam really really good concise what you need to know stuff um, you can buy it on amazon or you can get it via lulu via the link at the bottom